This is Corolla Digital. Hi, folks. I'm Larry Miller, but in a way, aren't we all? And this week on This Week with Larry Miller, I have the highest energy show I've ever had because Dr. Chris gave me a piece of seaweed. He went and bought seaweed that he thought was delicious, and I had to eat it. It was horrible. Listen to us on iTunes or the Adam Carolla app. We'll see you here. Now, it's time for this week's CarCast with your host, Adam Carolla, and moderator, Matt D'Andrea. Welcome to CarCast. I am Matt, the moderator, D'Andrea. Adam is not here today. Adam's doing uh, his new Spike TV show, Catch a Contractor. You guys can check that out on Spike probably the beginning of next year. And if you are in uh, Southern California and somebody worked on your house and they did a shitty job, you might be able to get your house on the show. I think they're still taking submissions. Check out catchacontractor.com. I am very excited to welcome back to the show Christopher Titus. Hey, how you doing, man? Uh, I will say, uh, uh, if you live in Southern California, I have ever hired a contractor. Somebody has done a shitty, shitty job. job. Right? So. I have been. I have sued two of them, and I've only hired three. <laughs> so two out of three. The other guy just didn't want to go to court anymore. I was like, I'm just tired. You still suck. Uh, I'd rather just take a hammer and do it myself. And by the way, people, just so you know, uh, I am not Adam Carolla. I understand that. If you're already hating it, here, write yourself an email, send it to yourself, uh, and so you have someone that really gives a shit. So uh, it's good to be here. <laughs> Thanks. I love that we're 45 seconds into it. You already, you know what? There's a disclaimer like, already every about Every time I have been on the show, what has happened is everybody's like, yeah, Titus was good. And then these two guys, there's always two guys that will sit down and write a diatribe, some horrible outlining, just go talk about my family, talk about my DNA. You know, I was yeah. from monkeys or whatever. And then, and, and, and it, for, there's Was that part, even true? Are you from monkeys? I am. Yeah, well, eventually, yeah, we all are. <laughs> okay. if, you, if you've read a book. Uh, mm-hmm. So we, I, I go back and, and I finally just like, it, you can always tell how bad someone's life is. How ineffective they're in their life by how much they will write, how, how much hate paragraphs they will write on the web. Yeah. So you can always tell that these guys' lives don't work out. And so I just want to put it out there right away. So uh, that's just me uh, being totally uh, out there. And if you guys don't uh, like it, um, uh, Adam will be back. Uh, cause he, by the way, I'm here. He's not. I care about you a little bit more. That's what I'm saying. I think he's doing his little other yeah. little show. Adam I, wouldn't even phone it in. There you go. He wouldn't even be like, <laughs> yeah. I'll call you from the car. He's just like, uh, producer Jeff, figure it out. Yeah. So it's well, CarCast. So thanks for having me on CarCast. One, I, of the, I, one of the few comics that actually is a, a car guy. A real car guy. And we're yeah. going to get into the car stuff. Yeah. But I know you got a lot of projects going on. Yeah. And, uh, and speaking of, you know, some... The hate mail that's going to come in. Tell me about the movie that you're putting together. Oh, we, well, I don't know if it's hate mail. You guys see the Adams people love this kind of stuff. We did a. <laughs> we did do. A, I think it's funny as shit. We but. did a pilot for Comedy Central all back called Special Unit, and the entire idea was it's the Shield with handicapped people. You know, it was <laughs> Lethal Weapon meets the Special Olympics, pretty much, because. And so if you go to uh, fundanything.com, Special Unit, the movie, you can check it out. It's. Uh, it, this all started from one thing, and I've been—I think I've talked about it with Adam a couple of times. Yeah. I've been trying to get this movie made for a while, and now with the web and and, and the crowdsourcing, it's it's becoming possible. Basically, what happened was I had a bunch of friends that are disabled, cerebral palsy, and and, and uh, little people, midgets, whatever. I, you know, all, all the words are bad. It's so funny. You know, he's handy capable. Still, you, still, you know, he's Brad. Why don't you leave him? He's Brad. Yeah. So. Basically, none of these guys get work. And there was a big protest uh, down at Grumman's Chinese Teal about 12 years ago where these guys pretty much were like, we can't get jobs. And they're like, okay, we're going to do more Santa movies and the midgets can play more elves. Right. Like, how, how many can- Willy Wonkas can we do? Yeah, how many Willy <laughs> <laughs> Right. So they did that. And then uh, – and- but to even get a guy in a wheelchair or a guy with cerebral palsy, you're always uh, – you're, you're never you – they never let these guys be funny or ballsy or have an attitude. It's always the poor little you know, disabled guy. Right. So I wrote a movie where they play – due to the fairness and Disabilities Act, the LAPD has to hire four handicapped undercover detectives, and I'm the total a-hole cop that's got to train them. And I'm an alcoholic, and I'm half criminal. Like in, early on in the movie, I actually go to a Dodge dealership because uh, a drug deal goes bad. I'm trying to arrest these guys, and they burn down my, my Dodge Challenger. 
So I had got <laughs> I had got this car dealer off on an assault charge with his wife, and I bring it up again, and I walk out with a free Challenger. Um, my character is an a hole, but uh, and then he's got to take these guys on, and uh, they end up being it's really funny. But go to fund anything. Look, I'm saying it's funny. Go to fundanything.com, special unit the movie. Click on there, check it out. Uh, the five minute video will make you laugh your ass off, and then just kick in twenty. There's so many people have gone to yeah. see it. I'm not sure that they've even. But kick in twenty. There's prizes. You get T-shirts. You can come to the premiere. Um, but we're doing it. I'm excited about. It. Awesome. That sounds great. It sounds funny. I know when we talked about it like a year ago, yep. it was it was a TV show idea, and yeah. now it's doing the film. I wrote a whole um, script. I wrote, a, I wrote a script that's just wrong. It's so wrong. <laughs> and that's why Hollywood doesn't want to do it. Look, Hollywood doesn't have the balls at one point to go, even, even Comedy Central. We actually filmed the pilot for them. Brian Cranston directed it. Brian Cranston, do me a favor. When you go to Special, uh, special Unit, the movie, on Find Anything Out to Come, see if you can find... Brian Cranston, he's in this. Yeah, how awesome is that guy? Uh, he is. Uh, he, I've known him for I've known him for fifteen years because he, because we used to go on uh, we used to go do a lot of stuff with because he was on Malcolm and I was a head Titus. We would go to all these all these press junkets, and so we would we would sit in limos all the time. Yeah, uh, the nicest guy, the funniest guy, so opposite Heisenberg. That's what, <laughs> that's what a good actor is. He's just the nicest guy in the world, and, right. he, and he's a great guy. And he can be a raging dick sometimes. <laughs> I'm he, I, I don't want to kill. I don't want to kill. I still want to kill the Heisenberg thing. I is he going to be him. in your movie? Because he's not going to be in Adam's movie. Uh, I think we pretty much made that clear. Uh, he's in. He, I tell you, if anything, I, if, if whatever filter I have to put on what he did in the pilot, it's going in. <laughs> and I'll, I'd rather deal with the That's lawsuit right. with Brian. All right, so go to fundanything.com. Check out uh, Titus's movie there. Well, better Give some money. And the more money he gets, the better chance we'll get uh, Brian Cranston in the film. Yeah, as well. exactly. He's, he's expensive these yeah, days. Yeah, because Adam pissed him off. I heard that whole thing. Boy, did Adam piss him off. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ooh. yeah. He was going to be the star. He was did Adam, be the star of the movie. Adam knew that it was Brian Cranston he was talking to, right? I have no idea. It's like our Anthony Hopkins. Adam drinks a lot of Mangria. That's true. I God, he does. <laughs> We've sold a lot of Mangria. I know. Yeah. That was me last night. That picture of me last last night. I was working on my. I'm building this uh, '56 Chevy Pro Street truck that we sectioned two and a half inches out of. And it's, it's the full. It's got a full like uh, tube frame on it. It's Pro Streeted, um, brand new motor, brand new 350 in it. And then I put we put. I literally got this '56 Chevy body that's got rusted corners and stuff. Yeah. And we just sandblasted it. I didn't fix any of the rust. I didn't fix any of the holes. And we just we just flat blacked it. So it's going to be a real rat rod. What I what I hate about guys that build rat rods is the entire car is a rat. You know your brakes should not. Be be rat rod you know your, <laughs> right, right. your transmission your, your emergency brake should not be rat rod your blinker should work and yet sometimes these guys we were coming out of uh, the LA Roadster show one time and I was driving my 56 wagon and I look over and there's a dude driving this 32 that you can see through the door through the door to the floor yeah. and you can see through the floor to the road and the and the air cleaner spinning it's like the air cleaner is like just spinning it's like it was just a scoop thing but it wasn't bolted down it was just spinning on top right. of the carburetor as he was driving yeah. and I thought that guy's going to kill somebody right he so has I, to sort of Fred Flintstone himself to the stoplight yes. light so if you just kind of kick it and yeah, make it look like a rat rod but for God's sakes don't you know there's enough idiots yeah. on the road we don't need someone with a car that's falling apart so tell me tell me about your truck you're putting a 350 in it just 350 you know it's 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 pro streeted it's got a it's got a badass four nine inch with 456 gears in it but i'm putting a 700 r4 in it i'm not doing anything it's got rack and pinion like the entire thing's been built originally it was and guys you want to buy a car you want to get a good deal on a badass car you have to be a vampire. You really have to go find a dude who's got a project that he's put his heart, soul into it and get, basically sold a kidney to build yeah. and wait till he can't afford it anymore. Wait about three months, then pounce. You pretty much, that's how you buy, that's how you buy a car. Don't do it yourself. You don't want to put the 300 right. grand in. You let a guy put in 300 grand, and then you buy it for 80. That's how it works. You let a guy put 30 grand in, you buy it for 10. That's how it works out. So just keep, you, you know, cruise your neighborhood. You know, Chip Foose used to do this. Chip right. Foose would literally, if he wanted a project, he would start cruising random neighborhoods. And er, invariably, you'll see some dude, like over the fence, you'll see a, like a car cover over something. And uh, Chip could actually, Chip's one of those guys, if, he, if, there was a, if there ever was a game show about how to call a car shape, Chip could win it. <laughs> right. So he would just go, he found a 69 Camaro Z28, a real one. Okay. Guy had just painted it, done all the body work, entirely top to bottom. The only thing it didn't have was a motor or a trans, 8500 bucks. The car ended up selling after Chip put it together for sixty three. Right. Something well, like that. that's different. When it's Chip, it goes the opposite way. Most people spend four hundred thousand dollars on a hot rod and they sell it for one hundred and eighty. Yeah. Why you, you want? Know? Why you want to bring this up? Why do you? Have, why do you want to? Why? Why? Why you just give me a proctology exam right here? Why don't you just tell them? Tell them what? Yeah. Hey, um, how, how's your? Uh, how's your? Uh, 
your 56 Chevy doing? Yeah, really? <laughs> really, dude? Is that you bring up? Uh, I spent, when I had my TV show, I don't know if anybody knows, if you go to, if you go to Titus Foos 56 Chevy on the web, you'll see it. The web. What, what, Actually, what, that what car. What do I call it? Do I, do I call it the web now? The internet? It, it, it's the interwebs? I don't yeah, know. The web. I, we need a new name. You know, like the very, oh, it's like the there. second or first or second CarCast show ever when Adam had no idea what we are doing with CarCast. Yeah. You came in. You brought the car. Yeah, it was really good that I, I got to, I was a, more of a guinea pig than anything. Uh, yeah, the car came in. Beautiful car. Look, look at the design. Chip's design it's gorgeous. is probably one of the best. It's probably the best looking 56 Chevy I have ever seen in my life. The interior is beautiful. Yeah. The motor co- covers everything. The problem was is that it was one of those cars that it went through six sets. Of, the, the frame, the chassis was hand built. Yeah. Not by me. Because <laughs> I would because I would understand if this happened and I built it. Uh, it went through six sets of shocks in about 10,000 miles. Really? So I took it to John Hotchkiss. I take it to Hotchkiss and I go, uh, John, can you just see what this is? He has his engineering team look at the car. Yeah. A, a team of guys. Like, a, like guys. Like guys who have PhDs and looked at it. Yeah, I was just with them all at the racetrack. Yeah, like, it's yeah. weird. Don't you feel dumb around those yeah, guys? Like two laps in, the guy's like, oh, this car is shit. The shocks are awful. I'm like, yeah, I was going to say that. The shocks yeah. are awful. <laughs> yeah, we need uh, two pounds more of pressure on the on right. Yeah, if right. you can just turn that, the bolts yeah. on the top. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so that, so Koch calls me two weeks later, and he goes, my guys looked at it, and uh, they can't fix it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Like that, when, when Hotchkiss calls you and says he can't fix it, that means that you should just set the car on fire. So, But I didn't do that. He actually sent me to this great guy, Cody, one of his race car builders, and they basically cut every uh, everything off the frame, the suspension, held the suspension on, and rebuilt it. So then I got it perfect, and then I was to the end of the road, and I sold it at Barrett Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. How'd so you do? I didn't do? I didn't do what I paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Surprisingly. No. Well, yeah. look, it was a con- did, fun did you car. Con- what, did, what was this and like? A, you did power like tour with it? And, yeah, yeah, it power, was. Yeah, power tour, uh, that's when, literally, at the beginning of power tour, it was running beautiful. By the end of power tour, because it was blowing shocks, <laughs> it literally looked like an Amish buggy. It right. was just bouncing down the road. It was ugly. It right. was very ugly. Well, here's the thing. It's like, you go to some hot rod builders, it doesn't really matter who they are, but, you know, they all have a special. There's a guy that's like, oh, I can fucking weld. Like, this is the guy that does, he does amazing body work and whatever. Right. But, that that guy wants to build the car, so you're like, all right, well, build the car, and he does puts a chassis together, puts suspension together. Maybe he has this guy on the side build the motor. Maybe some guy sprays the paint for you. But you kind of need like the guys that are specialists in those things. You know, um, like I want the guy to build my engine who just builds engines. You know, and I want the guy to paint it who just does paint and body. And you can't overlook things like that's suspension. An, it's an eight hundred thousand dollar car at that point. You know, you, you get, there's a point. I'm to the point now where like it's my sixty one bubble top right there. I, uh, I, I'm tired of paying people. You know, I can do it all. It's just time. But the problem is, is that if you, if you have a real job and you're a car guy, you don't have any time. Right. And I know, I know 50 guys that had, yeah, dude, I got a 58 Corvette. You got a 58 Corvette? Or I've got, I've got a fuel vet, uh, a 60, uh, 64 fuel vet. No, you're shitting me. Right. And uh, where is it? Where, where is it? Oh, it's been sitting under a tarp for 23 years. Right. Then you don't have a Corvette. You have, you have a tarp. Yeah, you have a tarp <laughs> over some fiberglass that is worthless right now. Right. And, you know, they all say, oh, you know what, you know what it's worth? Yeah, if you put 60 grand, it's worth 90, sure. But So I decided that I will never again let a project sit. So this truck, I mean, I was up to 2 o'clock in the morning building that Pro Street truck last night. And my hands, I woke up this morning going, I must be getting old because I have arthritis. And I realized that I was putting all the pan bolts in and I was actually getting the motor together. And I had to drill. I had to drill for the motor mounts. And my hands... I literally feel like I have I have fought four rounds with Clubber Lang. I really do. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You have to do it all the time. You, you're not yeah. practicing enough. So that's what you tell me. That's what I'm saying. So you, you got to keep working. So you said it very nicely, but you basically that was just that was just you're you're still you're kind of a pussy, Titus. You need to be in the garage. I'm more. saying you need to get back in the garage. There you go. All right. You need to stop fucking around. You can sit here I'm, and bitch about your hands clamping up. Or you I know. Can, my like, God. Go, are, or you I need, back mo- I need some sort of moisturizer. Go back into the garage tonight. So all right. So you got this. You got your truck that you're working on. You've got the bubble top, 61 bubble 61 top. 61 bubble top that uh, I got off eBay and uh, and was pretty much bent over a table on. That yeah. one. Uh, Those uh, are cool looking cars. That great one. looking car. They only made 8,600 uh, uh, the Sport Coupe. So that one, that one right there, the rockers were so bad that the guy had. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Be very careful when you buy stuff. Because eBay Motors is, by the way, one of the best places to go. I was on eBay Motors all week yeah. for parts for the 56. So, guys, if you have 56 Chevy truck parts, for God's sakes, put them on. I'm there every night. For God's sakes, there's some <laughs> shit I need. Get it on there. So I buy this car. It shows up. And I look under it. And I'm like, hey, it looks all right. It looked all right in pictures. The guy showed up. I look under it when it pulls off the off the, the hauler. And 
Then about two weeks later, I was under it, you know, just checking it out. I was changing some things, and I look up at the under the rockers, and it's black duct tape. And I'm like, black duct tape? Yeah. And I grabbed it and said, Fush! and it was literally <laughs> as if someone had put, like, some, uh, like, armament through there. There, were, there had been some grenades lit off under the car. There was holes blown yeah. in it. So I took it down to Mitch Lanzini, who's great, and Lanzini Body Works, and he, he got it all straightened out. Now it's all, it's all right, but... Oh man, you just get raped. I mean, that's why I'm doing it myself now. Because you never know. You never know when you drop a car off what the guy's gonna do. You also never know when you buy something. So I'm just, I'm just doing it all myself. Now. Yeah. The less you know about the car on eBay, the less you want to pay for it, and then it becomes still a decent deal. Like I just bought. We've been talking about it here for a little while. I bought this 1993 Mustang Cobra, which I like the car a lot. I had the car in high school. And Twenty years later, it got stolen. They got stripped, and then they cut the unibody in half when it's stolen from me. And, and this is down in South Florida. This is the it's one you place. bought? No, this is this, the one I bought oh, yeah, new yeah, 20 years right. ago. They cut the unibody in half. The reason why they do that is, is is these people will steal a bunch of cars. They'll strip them out, and then they'll cut the unibodies in half, smash the sheet metal together, put them in the back of like a panel truck, and then just dump. In the desert. Just No, just on a like a like like a lot where they're building a house or something because they want the insurance companies to find it because uh, case closed right. when they find the VIN number. And then you go back, right. and I was like, I can't even buy the car. I was like, you know, it's a Cobra. They only made 4,993 of the Cobras, 107 R models. And well, so this broke your heart a little bit. It did. Like, you know, I was working two jobs. This, I was like 17 years old. This like, was, this was my one. life. This was my car. Like, this was the shit. And, and I, I was like, all right. I went down with my dad. I was like, they found the car. Let's go get it. It's stripped. I was like, it's cool. Let's just buy the title from the insurance company, and I'll spend the next 20 years building it up from scratch. And you get down there, it's just like the unibody, the shell, it's all cut in half. Like, you can't, you can't do anything. I was like, fuck this. So I, I got rid of it, and here we are 20 years later. That's bad. That's like, that's, like, that's like finding the love of your life, and then you get a call from the cops, and, well, we've only found her head. That's right. <laughs> that's and that's horrible. split in half, too. I feel bad for you. <laughs> and then, I feel really bad for you. And that thing is split in half, too. Um, so here I are 20 years later. I bought it, and I took delivery of it this weekend. So I, I, we have this guy, uh, this uh, guy, Ed Brown. He, he, has a run, he runs a company called The Toe Guy. Right. He's The Toe Guy, and right. we, he's, his company is called The Toe Guy. Now let me ask you something. Yeah. You got the car back. Okay, now, now, like your favorite girl, it has built up in your mind for a very long time. On top of that, you work with Adam Carolla on CarCast. That's right. And have driven the best vehicles on the planet. Yes. Vehicles that only like like a handful of people could actually own. Yeah. So this thing that was in your mind, like your first piece of ass, did it live up in any way to what you thought it was going to be? Oh, I got in the car when it delivered, and I was like, the seat will move forward. The clutch is shit. It's like, this car is a big piece of shit. This thing is awful. Case closed. That's all I'm saying. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. people live yeah. with the memory. The memory's going to be man, better. Just walk I away. I loved it walk so away. much. I loved it so much in high school, and I just remember just... Racing the hell out of it, and then I got it. So I, we'll, we'll get into this too. We got this Roush Mustang outside, and I went from the Roush Mustang to this '93 Cobra. I'm like, <laughs> well, the, the clutch isn't the same at all. You know, this thing doesn't shift the same at all. So I took delivery of this thing. So the tow guy calls me up, and I'm like, go you, get you, this car. You know, it's the same thing as a Granada, pretty much, right? Yeah, no, I got it. Right. I know what it okay, is. I just want to make I sure. I, I, don't wanna, I don't want to keep beating you up, but you went after me the foos car thing, so I just want to make sure. You <laughs> right, right, right. No. You feel a little pain. I, I know what it is. I only paid like seven grand for it. It needs a lot of work. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> Stop there, man. You, it's every, it's every you're, little you're, bit. You're yeah. looking through the photos. You're like, it needs more than a lot of work. Yeah, I was just going to say. And I, actually, you know what I thought? Seven grand? Wow, you're not the smartest guy I've ever met. Well, it, it is. <laughs> what I bought was I bought a real Cobra, and I bought all the matching numbers, and I bought and it's got the stock wheels on it, which those wheels aren't. Those they're are, so rare you can't buy them. Really Even the rare. replicas are in a five lug, and the ones that are on it are four. Yeah, lugs, you can't so get you those can't wheels. Get that, no. Also, is that is that uh, is a spoiler stock on that? Was yeah, that a stock spoiler. Yeah, okay, the so body it's, kit's in it's good shape. Incredibly clean. If for a Cobra, it's incredibly clean. It, it looks worse Especially, than it is, but it's but it's pretty well, straight. It, it looks worse than it is. It would have that would have to be the truth because I'm looking at it and it would have to. It would, <laughs> if, it, if that's as bad as it is, then it's right. Uh, then so I, I get it, and I look underneath it. I was like, I told the guy, send me pictures. Send me pictures of under underneath the car send me the pictures and he did and i'm looking up and so i get the car i'm like you didn't send me a picture like he specifically took photos of like half the exhaust and the rocker yeah. panels <laughs> but without where the transmission is so when i got the car the transmission mount is so rusted it's held oh on God. by like a safety wire yeah. so i drove it home and i'm like i can't even i can't even move it now because the transmission's gonna fall you out. can always tell that like you can always say, be very careful you know if, if a guy if you if you 
people, if you click on a car you want to buy and it says 55 photos and you see 55 photos, same with buying a house, they'll show the armoire. You're not showing right. me the house. You're showing me the furniture in the house. Right. And the guy shows you the steering wheel, the stereo, you know, half of a seat. Yeah. You know, but it never shows you the passenger seat. I mean, never shows the driver's seat. It only shows the passenger seat. Out here, they'll show you – when you go to buy the house, they show you the view – of right. like out the window of the house. Right. This is what the ocean looks like. In it's the like street. a girl that like, had a mastectomy. Yeah, the they show the shit. one good tit. They just show one good <laughs> boob, and you're like, oh, she's she's beautiful. Yeah. And then oh, I feel bad. So I, went, I I've been waiting this for this car it's for breast a month cancer and a half. month, right? Are we okay? I just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to yeah. Yeah. people breast cancer awareness. It's a bad thing. Donate. Yes. Uh, go pink. Did I cover that? All right. That's good. right. Go pink. Buy the sweatshirt. <laughs> Fucking Seinfeld is the reason why I had to wait a, a month and a half to get this car. Because the tow guy went out and he's like, I'm going to go out. I'm going to get you a good deal on the thing. And closed transport's like two grand. He's like, I'll, I'll do it really cheap for you. But I'm waiting for Seinfeld to call. He's moving cars from New York or whatever to L.A. Right. And then, out of his hangar? Basically. From one hangar to the other. Yeah, he's, yeah. And I get the call like a week ago. And then like Seinfeld call. He's moving seven cars. I'm like, oh, you only fit seven on your truck. He's like, yeah. Only seven. It's like, you're fucked. You got to go do your own thing. And I was just about to pay somebody a lot of money to bring the car out here. Right. Like, like half the cost of the car. Oh. And then the guy calls me up. He's like, I'm here and I'm in Jersey and Seinfeld has six cars. I was like, oh. He's like, can you get the car in the next 12 hours? I was like, yes, I will. So I got lucky and Seinfeld paid to get this car out here for most of it, basically. I don't know, looking at the pictures, if you got lucky. <laughs> I would say that you've, uh, you've actually uh, kind of you've, – you've completed the circle. Let's just say that. The, the, the pain you had in high you school. You should have seen it. You completed the circle. And that, is, your, is your dad still around? Yeah. Okay, does he know? Yeah, I, I called him. I told him. I was like, he's like, wow, how bad is it to New York car? I'm like – it's rough. He's like, oh. yeah. There's a lot of there's there's some things you should have checked off. New York car, like, <laughs> based look, on right, the Granada. Look, there's a lot of crap that you maybe should have said. I'll live with the memory and continue to drive the McLaren and the Roush Mustang that I'm driving. The next morning, somebody put a note on there and said, "I want to buy it from you." I was like, four grand, four grand, yeah, <laughs> four grand. <laughs> so you should have seen the the Porsches and stuff that Signed Health had on the same truck. So Jerry, I know you don't listen to the show, but if your friends do. And you find a rat in one of your Porsches, it came out from underneath the hood of my car. Sorry about that, buddy. The sad thing that on that transporter, your car's the punchline. That it is. It's like yeah. Seinfeld's cars are the setup, your car's the punchline. The guy calls me, he's like, I'm taking your car off and I'm gonna park it down the street and then we're gonna unload the rest <laughs> of the Porsches. He's like, Come and get your car before any of Seinfeld's guys come and get their cars. He's like, We just don't want it near why why, why was that on that trailer? How come, how come that was on the trailer with my Porsches? I don't right. understand. What had that broken loose and wrecked one of my Porsches? Those are expensive cars. Why is that piece of shit there? I don't even think you could tie my car down because the rust would probably snap and just roll in and hit <laughs> like his five fifty spider, one of three in the world. Uh, yeah, he had he had some pretty nice cars. I'm, I'm not supposed to talk about it. No, that's my uh, that's my sixty eight GTO. I got that. I had to go to Inglewood to get that. So I went through. I sold the Foos car. I Wait, sold... did you get it like that? Or... Yes. Well, okay. except for the wheels. Kevin King over ear one is just yeah. is a buddy of mine, and, and uh, you know I ordered the wheels, and they showed up. Media charged me, and I'm like, Kev, you know you got to make money too. Right. Uh, man, don't worry about it, man. He's just the nicest guy. If you ever, by the way, any muscle car parts, go to year one. One of the best guys. He in is the guy. world. He and is. he's huge, by the way. He's, he's like yeah, physically yeah. a monster. Yeah, he's that. He is that guy. He's he's the scariest thing in the world because he's a brilliant redneck, and yeah. he's a red. He's a big, and he's, he's full on redneck. Like his accent, like yeah. you. But a good man, good man. So this car I got, I I was. So I so I said, I'm not getting any cars. I've got six. I'm getting rid of a bunch of them. Sold two. I'm not buying Craigslist. I'm at Craigslist 11. <laughs> I'm not going to ever. I'm just going to look. Look at that thing. And, and this guy had pictures underside, all of it. And, I, uh-huh. and, I, and he wanted, the price he wanted was ridiculous. Was and it was like not, a donked out version when you got it? That no. had like 28-inch <laughs> uh, wheels? Wow. Who's racist? <laughs> nice. So what happens is. Welcome is to I, the show, Christopher Titus, everybody. I, but just to be clear, just to be clear is that uh, I go to uh, Inglewood and literally I am the whitest person in Inglewood. They actually had a parade when I got there. They're like, oh my God, you actually <laughs> came here. And I went down and I found this dude who had this car and uh, and it was all the quarters were redone, the interiors redone, everything's on the there were some little things. Like the mirror was loose. Like there was some things that if you weren't a car guy, you right. would go, Oh, that's broken. Like you know when, when a guy goes, That's broken, right. well, you can buy that car from that guy. And like, but you know it's like, oh, it's a set screw that cost me ninety five cents, not a new mirror that's gonna cost right. ninety five dollars. And uh, the headlights didn't work, the vacuum thing didn't work on the headlights and the and the uh, Ram Air system was loose. And I looked at it and I went around it and I go and it had aluminum heads on it. It, 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 it all been edelbrocked out, and, I'm, and it ran great. And I drove it, and I kept going, "What's wrong with it?" Because it was the price was so good on it. I was mm-hmm. like, "What's wrong with it?" And the guy goes, uh, "Yo, I'm getting divorced, <laughs> and uh, I don't want that bitch to get none of it." 
<laughs> so, so what happened was, is I said okay. So I paid the guy in cash, and he and the dude. It's funny. It was a weird compliment. He goes, "Well, I'm just paying him cash for it." He goes, "Yo, man, you a player like me." <laughs> Really? Okay. Well, yeah. thank you. I didn't think you were going to take a check, by I the way. I just want everybody to know that I'm a player. That's right. Right. The whitest player in England. Man. <laughs> so, but it's, it's great. It's, it's, a, it's a beauty. I got it from my, my wife. My wife really likes it. I got to paint it black, though, which I don't want to do. Why you got to paint it black? Because she good. wants it black. I know. It doesn't look great like that. Yeah. It's that royal red. It's actually a 242 car, and it's, that's the, he, they painted it back to the, to the numbers matching color, so I, I think I'm going to leave it. Yeah. I mean. We're it, married. If she divorces me over that, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. Well, then you'd be like, "See, this is why I caught it. I kept it red. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was exactly. right the whole time." Black's great, but it's so hard. Like, it's hard to photograph. It's I hard have, to do like yeah, cool stuff. I have it. never had a Pontiac, uh, and I got to tell you that 400 motor. I didn't understand that that 400 motor is a mother. That thing, that this mm-hmm. car hauls ass. It'll lay yep. rubber forever. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's the so black. there's a there's a black one, and you lose you lose the lines on it. You lose the shape cool, of the car. Yeah, yeah you do. It's, she's wrong. <laughs> she's wrong. Yeah. A chick wrong about cars. How odd is that? <laughs> Again, it's breast cancer month, so please, don't. yeah, buy buy the t-shirt or sweatshirt. Support pink. Um, Jeff, we're gonna throw some of these up on the Facebook page, right? Well, they'll go to uh, facebook.com slash carcast show, and uh, we'll check out some of Chris's cars. So um, I, I want to talk about your little uh, your, your excursion with the Viper at Willow Springs. I've been doing some track racing. Uh, do we talk about we talked about this, right? I think uh, we was- might have, but man, we're gonna talk about it again. Okay, it's good. It's only cost. Well, it's in the new special. Voice in my head, by the way, is out on DVD. If you want to get uh, a, an hour and 45 minutes of my the worst fuck-ups of my entire life, go to ChristopherTitus.com. You can get the DVD. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be sent out this next week. Uh, we each did a 5.1 sound mix on it. It's my first production that my own company did. Nice. And Congratulations. It's badass. And there's a 30-minute story about meeting Bruce Springsteen on it. So, yes. I, and the, is that one of your fuck-ups? Uh, you know, I still <laughs> I acted like such a douche. I met. I got to in, in like a space of eight minutes. There's a point. I'm not that cool. I'm not that cool. I'm not that famous. I get it. In one eight-minute period, I met because they, they invited me to go to the show. They I got a call. Their son Evan used to watch my show, Titus, and made him and his uh, Bruce and, and Patty watch it. And so Nils Lofgren, I ran into Nils Lofgren, who became a fan of mine because he was recording with Bruce, and 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 they saw the show and blah blah blah. I ended up going backstage the first time I meet him. In a space of eight minutes, I meet the Edge from U2. Uh, Jackson Brown, Springsteen and his wife, and the E Street Band, and literally my my brain just fried. And I I started. I told the Edge, uh, I looked the Edge in the face, and I said, "Dude, I'm such a big fan. Blah blah blah. You're great." And when you guys came with Vertigo, I didn't even understand it. Uno dos tres catorce, and I'm just babbling. <laughs> and I go, "Dude, I." And then to t- kind of wrap it up, because I realized I was babbling, I, just to kind of get it clear, I go, "Look, I've bought so much of your stuff, dude. I paid for that shirt." <laughs> <laughs> and she don't laugh behind the glass that hard. I, I really said that. And my girlfriend looks at me, makes a hard right, and just walked away. She just left me. She didn't even try to. Like, yeah. She didn't even try to go. Oh, he doesn't really mean yeah. that, or he's retarded. She didn't do anything like that. She just turned and walked. That's right. Nothing. And he didn't. His blood sugar's low. Don't, he, worry, don't mind. Him. Exactly. He's been drinking <laughs> something. Nothing. She just bailed. And he just looks at me for a very long time and goes, "Great." <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> nothing else. And I just walked away, and I was just and then Henry Winkler. Then, I, then, like literally three minutes later, Henry Winkler walks up to me. Wait, you have the Edge and Henry Winkler. The yeah, same? isn't that weird? Yeah, watching Springsteen, and, and, you know, and, and my brain was like, uh, "Don't say, don't make him go a, don't, don't screw it up worse." So Henry Winkler comes over. And Henry Winkler, for whatever reason, was a fan of that show. I did big shots. His wife was, and she starts talking about what a good actor I am. So now I'm at this weird confusion thing. And then Springsteen walks by, and Springsteen talks to the Edge, hugs him. They just got off stage, and he goes, "Hey, Titus, man, it's good to see you, man. Thank, I got a story for you. It's a long story. Now it's a short story." No, it's a long story. And then he disappeared and went to his dress room. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it was just, it was one thing after, and Jackson Brown was, I told Jackson, God, I'm such a douche. Jackson Brown is in the dress room later. And, uh, and Jack, I, you know, Jackson Brown, when I was a kid, my Jackson Brown was playing all the time in our house. My dad used to wake me up at 6.45 every morning to running on empty because he knew my grades and he thought that was ironically funny. <laughs> <laughs> I meet Jackson Brown and I go over to him and I go, I go, dude, I, I, I go, I just want you to know um, your music. It's kind of like a soundtrack to my life. <laughs> you didn't really say I that. I swear to God. I, I swear to God I said it to him. And again, Jackson, <laughs> you just dropped your head in your hands. He just went like, but Chris is going to start to cry in there. So. Yeah, Chris just good. <laughs> Jackson Brown looks at me, and this is what I realized, and I talk about this in the bit. Everybody, everybody that we think is so cool because they're so famous is yeah. exactly like us. Jackson Brown looks at me and he goes, oh, man, uh, uh. 
man, I just wrote some songs. <laughs> That's all he said. I was like, wow, I'm a douchebag. I He's like, such... I don't even know what to say yeah. to guys like right. you. Dude, that was way too far. Yeah. Way you've actually you've actually crossed the line where we could never get along now because right. you have you have made me Jesus and I'm not. That's basically what he said. Has has have you ever been in that situation where you're talking to somebody, then the publicist comes over and just cuts you off without the you know the star saying anything? Uh, n- uh yeah, that <laughs> was like early, yeah early yeah on. we're we're done here we're done. Here. Early on, what I realized really <laughs> early on is that famous people are usually pretty cool. Yeah, but the people that represent them are most of the time dickheads. Oh my god, most of the time dickheads. Oh my god, I can't even. Yeah, and that's a blanket judgment that I'm going to make, and I'm going to stand by. Look, I look here at Corolla Digital. They do a bunch of shows, and there's always a guest. And you know, Adam's been doing this for so long. Even on the Adam Corolla show, right? He's been doing it for so long. We'll bring in somebody, and I, I only book like a handful of guests, like it's favors. And Adam will be in there talking to the interview, doing the thing, just killing it. And then the publicist will be like, "Ask him about the, ask him about the show, ask him about the show, ask him about the show." I was like, "I'm pretty sure Adam knows what he's doing. Yeah. Just give him a second, and he'll ask all the right fucking questions." Yeah. So but- don't don't hold up the card as the publicist going, "Ask him about the show." It's like. He knows what he's doing. You yeah. Know? yeah. And he, his producers know what he's doing. Yeah, but everybody know? thinks everybody wants to pee on it, man. Everybody, everybody, wants, everybody wants their little piece. And right. uh, by the way, speaking of my little piece, go to fundanything.com, uh, special unit, the movie. Help us out with that. By the way, watch the video. First of all, watch the video. You will laugh your ass off. Uh, Voice in my head. The new DVD is out on ChristopherTitus.com. And uh, and this is Christopher Titus uh, co hosting uh, with uh, Matt Andrea on CarCast. Uh, thanks for having me on so far. Listen, I haven't. I haven't I haven't crapped the bed yet. I'm okay. Let's keep going. No, it's good. So um, I uh, I can't believe you got to drive this. This See, here's what pisses me off. Uh, Nerd Punk Jeff uh, uh, works on uh, my podcast. He's a, that's he, right. He, Producer he, Jeff produces produce, your show as well. Right, produces our show, and he's, he's on the show. And every week, they come to my show, and or he'll he'll send me a picture. This is this is of, what we did. Or the Bugatti Viral. <laughs> yeah, look at how much fun we had today while right. you you while you were sitting there playing with a sixty one bubble top. And it's a it's a Bugatti Veyron or whatever the hell yeah. he is. I, I hate you guys a lot. So uh, you know we time. we don't just because of our schedule and Adam does a million different things. We don't get to drive a lot of cars. We apologize for that. We want to drive more cars. But so recently I've had the opportunity to hit the track twice. Once recently I went with the McLaren team and I went out with the McLaren Spiders. And they, they take you out, and they want you to know how car how well the car drives on the street. So you drive around the neighborhood. We went out to Auto Club Speedway right, in, uh, in Fontana. Beautiful Fontana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and ran the infield there for a little while. It's like, our, it's like, it's like, a, the, it's like, it's like Mad Max with a raceway in the middle of it. Pretty much. Yeah, right. pretty much, yeah. So they don't let us go on the big oval. The cars are too fast for that. So uh, we drive it around the neighborhood, and you hit the potholes, and we're like, see how comfortable it is? It's great. You can put the top down. It's fast. It sounds awesome. And then, uh, and then you, you grab one of their drivers, and they take you on the racetrack. And, and the beauty of it is, is it's, not like, it's not like four hours of, of going, say, slow down, slow down. The guy's like, you've all driven before, right? Grab a helmet. Let's do this. Really? And then you just jump in a car, and you start driving it, and you just start going faster, and you start going faster, and you start going faster. And you, know, you read all the magazine stuff about the McLaren being the best driving supercar out there, the best performing supercar. There, there's debates between Lamborghini and Ferrari and all this But stuff. it's something to say when, when the Italia, when they're, when they're actually this car, I mean, McLaren has built a lot of great stuff, but to come out with this car and have it to be like just so high, at such a high level, it, you know, when was the last time the, the, the Mercedes, the SLR is what they did last, right? No. The SLS, the SLS. AMG yeah, yeah, SLS. No, um, no, 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 the one before that. The, the, the SLR the, that they did, the McLaren, you're right, the McLaren built yeah, that for yeah, Mercedes. The, yeah. not, a, not a great performing car. Which is odd because now, that's when you get too many cooks. You get AMG, you get Mercedes, and you get, you get those guys together. I think when you get too many people, when you let McLaren go, like that, the, old, the old McLaren is still one of the fastest cars on the planet Earth. Oh, you know, the McLaren F1. Yeah, yeah. It's still it's 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 um, it's an amazing vehicle, and that these guys that that this because I would actually count this as really the follow up to that, right? Well, it's it's their first venture into their their own car, but they're coming out with the McLaren P1, now, which that, will be like the F1 replacement, and that that's so going to be like this, a one point five. This is basically built for like a guy a guy who only owns one internet company. You know, it could that's afford right. this one as opposed to yeah. Yeah, right. when you've only sold like one internet company, right? You buy you, this, McLaren. you buy this one. Yeah, yeah when you're Jay Leno, you buy a P1. Right. Yeah, Jay Leno's already like the only guy outside of McLaren to drive a P1 so far, right? Yeah, it's great. It seems really fast. <laughs> I can't believe it's better than my M1. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's a good car. This is a good car. <laughs> That's pretty much. I think his video. He, he did that exactly. <laughs> so um, I got to drive this car, and uh, I think um, if we have the time, Jeff's going to whip up a quick video of a few laps of me. 
in this car driving it and uh you know so get just on to, there just me, to really make me feel tell me what, what a shitty driver i am but this car is is really amazing to drive now, the suspension you said potholes hit no problem is it's it's like a, it's comfortable to drive is it like street. what the, i mean and the vet's a low level like that that um that suspend that, that react. What do they call it? The hydromatic. The, the magnetic ride. The ma- yeah, maglev. That so, is I won't say maglev. That's a train. I'm an idiot. The uh, it reacts to what's coming up. It kind of does, but with these guys, it's not in the shock. What they have is is a hydraulic type of sway bar, but it's not a conventional sway bar. It's like a Z bar. And in in some of the photos that I put up, you can check out. I put up a bunch of photos on my, my Facebook page. It's facebook.com/slash motorator. And I think we'll put some up on CarCast as well. But in the chassis shots, there, we sort of zoom in on the front, and it looks like uh, you can kind of see there's like a steering rack up there. And over to the left, there's like a canister with a black top on it and stuff. And that's sort of the hydraulic uh, fluid pump for the way the suspension racks. So instead of the magnetic ride shocks, they do it with sway bar damping. But, I'm, but it's amazing to me how fast it happens. Though. That would be, it we, is incredibly we fast. We are to, with engine management and suspension now, we are to a place, we are to a place that, that as a kid, when I was working on my 56 Chevy, in, you know, as a kid on my 77 Oldsmobile Delta 88, which was my first car. Don't want it. Not like you. I'm not going to track it down. Don't really care. It was, <laughs> a, it was a brick with a 305, and then you stepped on the gas. It, oh, yep. it was ugly. I had an 87 come out with a 305. Uh, so it's amazing where technology has gone. I am, um, uh, and and you can't really. This is the kind of stuff you need to be Jack Roush, who's got a degree in physics, to actually work on. Right. This car is so. I mean, this car was so amazing to drive. When we look at the chassis stuff, you're like, it's fairly simple, but it just takes so much engineering to get to that point. Now, this is a 3.8 liter V8. This is a, an engine completely designed in house. I'm sure they have suppliers that help build them the engine, but it's completely designed in house. It's two small turbos right on the sides of the engine, very, very close. Like, it's a very short exhaust manifold, and they do that so they can spin them up very quickly. And they want it to be like a naturally aspirated engine. So any turbo car in your... your um, Turbo lag, right. And uh, your car with a centrifugal supercharger, that kicks in at like 3,000 RPM. It's like an old turbo car. It's kind of the same way. This is supposed to be high boost, very low RPM, so it feels like a naturally aspirated engine. Did it? And it does. It really does. A little bit of turbo kick you can feel that thing kicking a little bit on the low rpm but for the most part most people won't even really notice it like you know somebody like justin bell who drives these goddamn things all the time in tanner faust like those guys be like yeah, yeah i got it you know i, I can feel it i could feel it i'm like i wouldn't feel it i don't need milliseconds of turbo yeah. lag can't believe that i to work that out and then you hit like the sport mode and the track mode and you're like oh it sounds better it sounds better and the guys are like yeah yeah we just did that for the for the owners that go down through malibu up on the pch it's like because basically when you look at it <laughs> it's like the turbos go right into the exhaust manifolds that go into four catalytic converters, and then there's this cross pipe in the middle, but the cross pipe is just an X pipe to join the exhaust. Right. It's empty. There's no muffler on it. The turbos are quiet enough for the car. So when you hit the button and, and they're like, oh, it goes louder, it goes louder inside the cabin of the car. It doesn't change the exhaust note at all. Whether you're in the economy mode or full track mode, the outside stays exactly the same. It only pipes it. It changes... Inside the car, the volume inside, <laughs> and and even they you can go into the computer. For some movie producer who's driving to LA, yeah. so he can sound like a badass going through the case. That's, That's right. So when he's brilliant. in like full safety mode, so he doesn't wreck the car, and he wants to pull out a Ralph's and make it sound awesome, he can just hit the button and, and makes it sound like it's awesome in the car. But really, the exhaust is very very simple. Just the turbos alone make it quiet enough that you don't even need a muffler. It's on got it. four cats. Too. Yeah, it's got four cats. Yeah. You know, um, but the car sounds amazing. You'll see it in some of the videos. We took a bunch of photos, so hopefully they turned out well. Um, but that was a cool, cool car. So here's my question. Yeah. And, and I have a question about all these top-end cars. Because I had, I had a Z06. I love my Z06. Well, the only car I've ever regretted getting rid of was my Z06 Corvette. Uh, and I'm going to probably get another one. Uh, that new C7 is fucking badass. Uh, it looks like it. I have to be honest with you. The C7 is a great car, and what it does is great. I have a little problem with the pla- black plastic on it, and I have a little problem with some of it. It's a little Nissan, Nissan GTR. It's the it's back a is li- a little yeah, In the back, big. it's weird. I, I, I'm not a big traditionalist, as long as it's better. Yeah. But the new taillights, I'm like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Right. I, I kind of saw one. We were driving on the road, and I, I saw one with, a, with, with plates on it and a thing on the front. They were, were kind of hiding it. 
And the taillights, I thought it was a Camaro at first. I went, right. That's a weird look. It's not a Camaro. Oh, my God, it's one of the new vets. Uh, yeah, we haven't driven it yet, but I, I got to spend like two hours with the engineers to go through the it. whole thing. And they're like, this is why it's so awesome. Everybody's raving on it. And yeah. maybe it's just my problem because I had a problem when the, when, the, when the C6 came out. I had a problem with it. I was like, it's dude, the, the rear overhang's too short. It's kind of goofy. And then it grew on me, and then I loved it, and now I think it's one of the classic yeah. VET designs. I, I think this will probably go in the same way. This car performs so well as it is. I love to see the Z06 version and the ZR1 version. I mean, the car already does 0 to 60 in like 3.9 or 4 or 4.1. You I mean, st- in the, the base yeah, version? The, the base version is incredibly fast. And a seven speed <laughs> manual. Z- that's like Z06 numbers just, yeah. just for the base version. Yeah, I, I, think, I think the C7 is faster around Laguna Seca than the ZR1 was, the previous ZR1. So that's and and it does it with like 200 horsepower less. So that's that's the kind of engineering they have dialed into that car. So, um, so before you go out and buy yourself a C6 Z06, maybe, uh, maybe yeah. to a few laps. I don't want to do C7. the C7. The DeAndrea <laughs> Mustang move, the Cobra move. We're gonna call it the DeAndrea uh, Cobra move. Yeah, I had it when I was a kid. It's gonna be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this thing's a piece of shit. <laughs> well, luckily for you, the Corvettes are all plastic, so there's not gonna be as much <laughs> rust as exactly. what I have on mine. Um, so uh, so how was this car? Tell, tell me about the McLaren. I, I mean, I can't even imagine. I also don't understand why, at what point, because when you get to that level, the, the, the 458, you get to the McLaren level, you get to the level of these cars, it's like, it's, it's, there no, there's no other reason for that car. There's two reasons for that car. You have an incredibly small penis or you're an incredibly good driver and you right. just want something that's bad. So you have way too much money. I'm going to go with the good driver. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. <you know. laughs> um, me, I'll go with know, the small I, penis. Listen, I'll tell you that's that. That's why I had my Z06. I think... I think it's an incredibly easy car to drive, which is it's it's so fast and but it's just so well balanced and it's just so well dialed in and that it's actually easy to drive because the other track day that I did recently was with the Roush Stage Three Mustang and I'm a big muscle car fan. Obviously, I love the rear wheel drive. I love the cars that slide, make tons of noise. We actually have the car here. We'll go take a look at it soon. But I was more nervous driving that car because I always felt like I was just going to get loose and slide off the track. And that thing was so much fun to drive. I went out there with John Hotchkiss, of course. So, you know, I'm out there and I'm driving the car and I'm I'm going faster. I'm going faster. We went to Button Willow and I've never been on that track before. It was my first time. And I'm like, this car is great. And then uh, I was like, John, um, will you get in the car with me and give me some instruction and show me what you're doing? I was like, you you drive and, and, and do a few laps. And he's just he's fucking making yeah. me cry i was like my whole day was going good until you started driving in the car and now i feel like but a you shit. shouldn't feel bad that guy owns a suspension company you know you should feel bad in if like so, you know some some girl scout gets in you some right. your, your, your grandma gets in and does better than you you're fine yeah you know, john hotchkiss getting in and destroying you on the track that should happen right it'd be bad if john hotchkiss got in and it was like this thing doesn't turn in well at all you know he's hitting cones and I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not, it's not me yeah, it's not yeah, me yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah, not me what's wrong and you were like killing him that that, that would be yeah, bad that that's a good story, but Dude. but but John Hotchkiss is a better driver than me. Is yeah, and okay, good. He could have done it blindfolded, right. and he would have been still better than I was. But, I'll say uh, this: John Hotchkiss doesn't have a podcast. There you go. You, <laughs> yeah. you kill that. He needs me to talk about him there on the show. That's go. what it is. Is he needs me here? So, um, uh, my first time in Button Willow, I love that track. The thing about uh, Willow Springs, which you've been on a bunch of times, streets. The streets of Willow, the small track, is kind of small, small yeah. and the big one is really kind of too fast, especially if you're in a car that you've never been out there before. Yeah, I know that. My <laughs> Dodge Viper flew it off the uh, uh, off the track at 130 with an instructor in it. Had yeah. a guy that was supposed to be teaching me, and I'm not How sure. do you just not get out and just punch that guy in the eye? Because it was my fault. I, I went around, <laughs> I, It was my fault. I went out the track. I, I get around. The, you know, because look, you're a guy. You, I'm in a Viper. I want it's my Viper. I want him to drive fast. I'm paying the guy to you're gonna teach me how to drive fast. Let's go fast. And he starts going around the track, turning and breaking distance and blah blah. And then I hit. Then we go around twice, and I, he's like, "What do you think?" I said, "I want to go." I'm like, I'm, <laughs> like a, "I'm a six year old being held back, uh, like someone holding an ice cream just out of my reach." And so he goes, "All right." And I hit it, and I hit that second corner that goes up that hill. And I yeah. thought, I thought the track went it turned maybe 20 degrees and it turns like 50 degrees yes it does and i hit open desert at 130 miles an hour right and then instead of just stomping the brakes and stopping the car i thought i got this and i aimed back for the track and he didn't say any now again and i say this in the bit i do on stage perfect time to give me some instruction right, right. he's all ah! <laughs> so 
I just aim back for the track because I don't want to. You know, I have that thing where I don't want to look like a loser. So I got this. So I'm yeah. just going to get it. I'm going to get it off the track. And this, now I don't realize, but I have dust and dirt all over the wheels. I'm still doing about 130. I aim back for the track. Such an idiot. I hit the edge of the asphalt, which has about a four inch bump. You're hitting, you, you go from dirt to asphalt. There's yeah. going to be a bump. The car unweights, and now I'm sideways at 130, and I just swapped ends. I swapped ends about six times with it, and then it flew off backwards and sideways in the in the infield and flew like we were in the air. Yeah. I prayed. I can. I remember specifically going, "Please, God, God, don't kill us. Please, God, don't kill us. Please." Don't. And when we hit the car, went. I hit on my side. Car went totally at vertical. Didn't flip, but it just kind of paused there for a second, and then bam came down on the wheels, broke the front end. It was horrible. It was horrible. That was God. your car. That was my car, yeah. Cosmic <laughs> Fiber. Here's how cool that Viper was, though. The radiator was trashed. Yeah. Uh, and all the water just fell out of it right there. But we actually, uh, we, hit, we hit so hard, any car guys might get this. We hit so hard, the rear tire of the car, and I tell this story in voice in my head, uh, in joke form, not in the painful way I'm telling it now. Uh, the rear tire folded over itself, peeled off the rim, yeah. and folded over itself like a condom. That's how hard we hit. <laughs> so we had to take it back to the race shop at Willow Springs, and those guys were great. We peeled it back off, got it on. Radiator was was empty, uh, and and I I turned it on. I was and the motor was running okay. We we fixed that. What was the fan? Because the fan was broken, and uh, and I was like, well, and it didn't heat up really fast. Like it didn't heat up. We're sitting there. It was slowly doing. It. it was doing it, but it was doing right. slow. So I got on. I got on the fourteen. Or I started going head. Back yeah, I'm out. driving it home. Yeah. It's fine. I'm driving. It home. As long as I kept that thing at sixty miles an hour, the the temperature didn't move. That V10 was crazy. It was crazy how cool it stayed as long as I kept the car moving. And then I got near L.A. and tra- I saw traffic, and I went to that horrible nuclear anxiety thing you do. When you, you know, people don't know if you're a car guy. Like, like Certain people will just watch the temperature gauge and not really – it won't cause them stress because they don't understand what's happening. Right. If you're a car guy and you see that temperature gauge moving, it's like you just start growing cancer. I'm just – tumors are just forming on me. Right. And, ah, and I'm yelling at people, get the fuck! Ah! And I'm pulling – you know, and I, you get on the shoulder and you start breaking horrible laws just to keep air moving through the vehicle instead of just pulling yeah. over and fixing it. And and when you get in traffic, when you're getting up on somebody's ass, the closer you get to the guy in front of you, you you're blocking all the air to the front of your car. Right, and right. so so you need to get well, on sort of the open road. So when you're on the 14 driving home, you're like, "Oh, it's getting tons of air." Yeah. As soon as you get into that LA traffic starts slowing down, and cars and the guy cuts in front, in front of you. you. Dude, yeah. you're, you're screwing up my airflow. <laughs> that's yeah, that's a, that's the worst you're thing. You're blocking my air. Yeah. I hear that all the time. All the time. All right, so if you want to uh, uh, see if you can buy some of uh, Christopher Titus's Viper parts, check out eBayMotors.com. Uh, eBay Motors, we love those guys. I don't, I know you go, you use eBay all the time. I use the eBay app. I get on to, my phone and I'm looking for parts. If you had to add up the time I've spent on <laughs> eBay Motors, I could have, I could have, I could have cured cancer. Yeah. If I've been put that research time into that, I would have cured cancer. But this truck's going to be badass, and I think that's the same thing. I mean, really, if it's just like cancer or a truck, yeah. Truck. Well, you, this 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 truck, when it's done, is going to cure cancer. It's, people are going to go, that thing is bad. That's ass. right. I feel good. I feel better. Don't forget it's breast better. cancer month. <laughs> By looking at that truck. Um, so uh, check out eBay Motors. Check out the app. Um, see if you can find <laughs> Christopher Titus curing cancer with eBay Motors. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the eBay Motors blog. Uh, do we know? Do we know what's the recent blog up there, Jeff? Uh, Bury me at the quail is up right now. Oh, eBay Motors blog. Right. Adam writes a blog. The Quail's, I think, at Pebble Beach, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the it's greatest like the, happening on earth. It's like the best VIP thing in the world. Yes, when it comes to food. Now, there's cars there, too. Don't you feel like when you get X, because, you know, there's certain people that just expect it because they have that kind of money. But when you got, they let you in, right? And you're in, you're like, and you know you're Suckers. not supposed to, you know you're not <laughs> supposed to be there. <laughs> and that, that's when it's the best. VIP, if you're used to VIP, it's just normal. But if you if you're not supposed to be there, it's the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, I'm it so, was and it was. Yeah, I, I don't even know why they let us keep going. There. Probably but, uh, because we keep talking about it now. And so all the girls. Now, now, did you did you meet anybody there? Did you talk to any chicks or anything? There's some chicks there. Yeah. Yeah, but you're the dude that's like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm here. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm here. Oh, he's all about the food. <laughs> like, I think. Yeah, Jeff... I was asking the girls to get out of the way so I could eat more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, honey, can you slide a little to the left? I think Jeff is the one that called it. He said, uh, "We're we're we're like, oh, what should we eat first? He's like, hold on, let's ask let's ask Chris. He's basically the Yelp of the of the quail. He knows where all the good foods at, and he was he was definitely spot. You on. guys have a great life. And, uh, and, and again, envy and hatred is pouring out of me. So let's move on. Yeah. So uh, support the show. Go to, uh, go to carcastshow.com. Uh, find our PayPal banner. Click on it. And as Adam would say, keep the pirate ship afloat. And, uh, and Amazon. You know, um, the holidays are going to be coming up soon. 
You going to buy a bunch of shit on Amazon? I know I will. If you go, go to, to yes. go to carcastshow.com, find the Amazon banner, click on the banner, cost you nothing. We get a little bit, bit of kickback. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, we also have the Titus podcast, not to advertise my my podcast on Adam's show, but uh, same thing. If you're a big Titus podcast fan, or if you're not, go to it. It's different. It's it's it's. We don't just do. The, we don't. You guys do something great that podcasts don't do. I tried to when I invented the, when I invented my little show. I wanted to make sure like so we cover the news for half an hour. I do this thing called the Armageddon update. We talk about what's going on in the world. So if you want to get updated in the world in a funny way, and then uh, here you know we we've we have stolen we have stolen some of your elements flat out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff, um, Jeff has, I think. Yeah. All right, so we got uh, you got your website, ChristopherTitus.com. ChristopherTitus.com. Go there. Vo- a voice in my head is is out there. Uh, the new special is out. Hour and forty five. And by the way, get it because you're actually um, supporting someone who did it on their own. You're not supporting some big company like Warner Brothers who doesn't need it. You're actually we did that ourselves. Okay, it's one hundred percent ours. Um, and then um, your fund anything campaign. Fund anything. Special unit the movie. If you want to see the funniest movie, um, I, I'm going. I'm, I'm going to beat Road Hard on this. I'm going to go Do funny. It. Than Road Hard does. My, by the way, Road Hard's about some comic that's been working the road forever, fifteen years, had a TV show, is not as famous as he used to be, right? Right. So do I? Do I file a court case against that? Do I? <laughs> do I? Do I file against Adam for stealing my story? He, the, the original script said Christopher Titus. That was the name <laughs> of the movie. But then I was, I was like, let's just call it something else. He's like, all right, Road Hard yeah. is like we love Chris. There's a whole scene where mad. the guy comes in someone else's podcast and host. It's great. It's really yeah. it's a good movie. Adam was like, I don't want to piss off Christopher Titus by calling it that, and also I don't want to give him any money. <laughs> there you go, exactly. Um, so yeah, so go to uh, funanything.com, uh, a special unit, the movie. Check out the video. You will laugh. If you laugh, just kick in 20 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever. If at a 100 buck level, you get T-shirts and there's tickets and then you, you go up to the premiere. There's all kinds of stuff you can get. Uh, and if you really want to invest, uh, and you're helping disabled actors, that's the problem, is that we have all these guys that are really funny and no one has the balls to put them in because every television uh, station, uh, every – Every movie company is afraid that they're going to get backlash. So what they're doing is, but it's okay to put them in an elf movie. That's fine. Yeah, you can be an elf. That's not offensive. They're imaginary. <laughs> and all these guys, like Brad Williams is in it, and Brad Williams actually has his own elf suit. And I said, that's the saddest thing I've ever heard, that you can't walk in as a little person, as a midget, and they go, I can't really see you as an elf. Um, do you have a suit or a funny hat? Some shoes with curls on them. That would be good. If you could get those on, I bet you I could finally see it. That's how, that shows you how dumb people in Hollywood are. So as Adam has done to step outside Hollywood and let the world do it, and I've been on stage for 25 years, for 28 years. If I don't know what's going to make an audience laugh, it's time for me to quit. So we, we this is our first movie, not our first project though. We did uh, Voice in My Head, uh, and so and I produced Titus, and I've got a Writers Guild nomination. Help us make this movie, fundanything.com, special unit to movie, and uh, go watch it anyway. You'll laugh your ass off. All right. Support Titus. Let's go outside and check out the Roush. I can't wait. Hey, Southern California, two great chances to see Adam Carolla coming up. First, this Saturday at the BevMo in Irvine. Come by and meet the Ace Man. Pick up some Mangria and the new Mangria White Peach and Pear. The Ace Man will be hanging out at the BevMo in Irvine starting at 11 a.m. this Saturday. Then, Tuesday night at the Ice House in Pasadena. Don't miss the Adam Carolla Show live with special guest, the NFL Network's Rich Eisen. The show will also stream live on the Video Podcast Network. Adam Carolla's Mangria appearance this Saturday at 11 a.m. at the BevMo in Irvine. And the Adam Carolla Show live at the Ice House in Pasadena with guest Rich Eisen this Tuesday night. Get all the details online at adamcarolla.com. All right, here we are with uh, Christopher Titus, and we have the 2014 Roush Stage 3. This is the big daddy of Roush Mustangs. This thing's pretty badass. Now, I know that it just I took out a base-level GT with a Coyote motor in it right. uh, when they first came out, and I have to be honest, two things that I noticed about the new style Mustang, very BMW-like in its ride, and that motor is just butter, just the it's sweetest phenomenal. motor. So then, yeah. you, then you take that motor, and you give it to Jack Roush, who is like literally our car version of 
Iron Man. He's basically our Tony Stark. Right. You know, survives airplane crashes, whatever. He, he actually, does supply, survive he, airplane crashes. He taught physics. I was looking up and it says he taught mathematics and physics. I, by the way, if he taught physics, we, you don't need to put mathematics in there. We got it. <laughs> so, and so he's basically, you know, he's a drag racer. He built every kind of motor for every kind of racing. Um, he's actually got some, he's got an NHRA championship with Gap. He's got his NASCAR team. NASCAR teams. And so the one thing I didn't like when I drove, and then I drove a Cobra, okay? Now here's what I, here's what I want to know what the, uh, the changes are. When I drove the Cobra, I thought the shifter was really tough. It was like, uh, it was almost work to drive it. Right. If I was going to live in it as a race car, I'd be like, okay, I could get used to this. But daily car, I couldn't do it. Did they fix any of that stuff in the new box? It is. This, this, um, I actually took this car uh, to Button Willow and uh, got a bunch of laps um, around the track with that thing. And this thing, the, the clutch is butter, the shifting is great. The motor is absolutely phenomenal, like you're talking about now. They pumped this one up with their Roush Supercharger. This thing makes 575 horsepower. And that's basically in its stock form, emissions legal. Now you can do an upgrade. They have sort of a cold air filter, a conical filter package and a tune that'll pump it to 625. Right. And then if you go with the built motor, the illuminator engine motor, you can get it to 675 horsepower. Wow. But 575 seems like enough for me because this thing was hauling well, here's, ass around here's the track. Because I, I know it's still got the, it's still got the, uh, the liver axle. It's not in the yeah. rear. So at what point are you losing so much in traction that you just there's got to be a, a perfect level of horsepower like 575 it seems about that's about limit right because it's 625 650 aren't you just I, I mean, blowing the tires off pretty much when you want like if i was a better driver that i could probably handle 625 or 675 but as it is right now it worked out perfectly i give the car back to roush in one piece which they appreciate that's, that's the right. only way i'm ever going to get another one to drive did they lock and down the traction control button do not touch the traction I, control button i didn't touch the traction control button <laughs> and and there were more than one time around the track i'm like oh i can feel the traction control doing its job good job traction control <laughs> thank you're you so for smart. Saving, right? you're yeah. so smart <laughs> your ass starts to stick out <laughs> that's right oh, oh thank you yeah so basically uh that that happened um and it was great and we have a great video of some track stuff you can check out the promo video that our uh, that our friends at Com Media put together. So they also did the brake upgrade. It's got the 14 inch diameter uh, brakes, and I believe these are the, the four piston calipers. Right. I think they have a six piston upgrade as well. Now, is that, is that Roush's own brakes? Is it based on a Brembo or something? I, I'm not quite sure who makes it. I'm sure that they partner with somebody to do it. I love when they just have, like, I guess a Model T has just dri driven in. Yeah, basically, that's the, the awesome minivan that. Some and delivery guy just came in. It doesn't say supercharge, it says Roush Charge. It says Roush Charge. That's what a charge. badass you are. When you actually change the name of something. Yeah, one thing about your the, name. One thing about the Roush cars. Titus is, Charge will never be on anything. <laughs> is they love putting their name all over it. Yeah, he signed it in 14 or 15 places. Yeah, he signed it here. It signed twice on the dash. Yes. Um, wow. So this makes it all emissions legal. This is a stock airbox, and because of that. This thing, you can buy this thing and drive it pretty much anywhere. Now you can go to their conical air filter and that'll bump it from the, from the 575 to 625 horse. How is that possible? How is the air filter change bumping it to 50 horsepower? Combined with the tune. So they'll, they'll change the tune a little bit. So it'll actually bring in more, more air, more air. They do the tune, add more fuel. They can add a little bit more timing and they can get a 50 horsepower bump out of it. You said not, they're smart guys. But why not guys. just do that then? Why not just, I mean, if, like, but 575 is great. It's great. But if it's just a computer tune, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a chip, right? Pretty much. A couple hundred bucks? Yeah, I don't know what the whole kit costs, but yeah, yeah. let's say, let's say you spent 65,000 on the car and it was a thousand dollar upgrade. Oh, that's not bad. Thousand bucks for the for the all that all that time I, to make I guess it, the map. I don't know. Somewhere. They didn't send me the numbers, but you figured that's what it is. But you just said five seventy five is more than enough than what I need. Yeah, and I most can't. people. So um, this is uh, this is great the way this the way this engine is, and uh, you know the Coyote engine. I think is is such an awesome engine. The four I, valve. I, I think what's amazing about it, and and I think they need to put their name on more stuff. <laughs> um, number one, that's number one. Um, is, is it one, two, three, four, five? Six, only six things in the engine compartment. I, I think they've kind of uh, oh seven, seven oh 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 eight nine. Yeah, the, the all right, all right, here. all right. They're good. That's good. That's good. That's enough. Okay. Um, so then, this is a Roush Mustang. Yes. I just want to make sure. Um, so the thing with the supercharger and is, now Roush doesn't make its own supercharger. Is that a Whipple based unit or is Roush? No, they start own? they start with Eaton TVS screws. Okay. They're Eaton TVS twenty three hundred screws, but then the rest they do make. 
Oh, they do? Yeah. Now, a bunch of supercharger manufacturers, Edelbrock and a bunch of guys use the Eaton TVS screws, but then everybody sort of does their, their kit differently, and theirs is great. And their intercooler is underneath. The Coyote engine has such a deep, deep uh, uh, galley the area that they run the, the intercoolers down there. It's an air-to-water intercooler. Wow. So here's, here's the good news you get, guys. When you, when you get a Roush Mustang, you've got a guy who taught physics working on it. It's not some, some knucklehead who just started bolting parts onto a stock right. Coyote motor. You got a guy who actually sat down with uh, his computer guys and they went through the mapping of the, of the engine. They, he sat down with pretty much uh, all his manufacturers. You know, he knows exactly what he wants. It's, again, it's not just some, some guy who's slapping his name on it because he bolted on a supercharger and a new exhaust yeah. system. And he's smart enough to hire the best engineer. Somebody can come to me and be like, I can build superchargers. Yeah. I'm like, great, you're hired. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, I really? Won't know. I won't. Really? You build supercharges? Really? Yeah, cool. That's awesome. Um, let's yeah, you and up. I would be the Beavis and Butthead <laughs> of our, our own car company. Uh, let's fire it up. Here, you grab the key, you fire it up, and I'll stand I back heard here. I it earlier, and it literally sounds... It sounds nuts. This yeah. thing is amazing on the track as well. On the street, it's just... It sounds great. All right, now, my mic's going to go bad because this is ugly. weird it's got it's got i mean it's got both it's got that little that european kind of that yeah. little crackle and it's also got that muscle car it's almost like a like a it, it they've got this thing i don't know if it's just in the tuning or the way the Kyrie is built but it gives you just the right those downshift pops yeah. those the backfires when you're when you're downshifting so you it literally great. feel like like steve mcqueen like yeah it's called that's what it's called it's called the steve mcqueen option <laughs> at when you come off in the corner By the way, it's fun just to do that. I'm done. Like, I'm, I, that's good. I already feel I, I'm, yeah, I'm bigger. I'm bigger now. That's nice. <laughs> and they basically didn't, you know, we got, we've, you've got uh, this boost gauge. You yeah, got they boost. put the boost gauge in the, in the AC vent, which is actually a pretty good idea. Yeah, because, because it's not, it, it doesn't it keeps, block my sight up in the, in the A-pillar. And it keeps the boost gauge cool. You got it air does. conditioning blowing on the good boost gauge, which in this car right. is working really hard. Air, air blows around the vent. It works. <laughs> it blows around. So basically, they didn't really change that much the interior because you know they they added um, upgrades. On, on this particular one, you're right. They, they recovered the seats. They added uh, their their Roush stuff, the gauges and the and the shift ball and all that stuff. Right. But in this one, they did sort of the um, the Boss 302 Laguna Seca rear seat delete, and right. they put the brace in the back, which I thought was kind of cool. I really felt it on the track too, because I felt like the stiffness. No, I don't know. What it was and doing not that, track. and not that this car had that problem, but it's I drove. I drove the Boss and I drove the Laguna Seca, and, and it, yeah. it's, it's weird how you can feel a difference, right? You know, because when you're in the Boss, you're like, this is things like a, it's like a scalpel, and then you put the, the brace in the back, and you're like, wow, it's even even. Now I'm I'm so far out of my ability. Like the car, the car is so much better than I am, and then they just went a little further with it. Yep. All right, so this is the 2014 Roush. Check this thing out. I don't have the sticker on it. You can look it up. I think the base package is 17,000 above the Mustang. So whether you buy your However, you get it equipped. So yeah, Cobra's what? Cobra, a Cobra's what about sixty? So the GT500 is about sixty. G this is probably puts you in that sixty, maybe sixty-five thousand dollars range. There's a couple options you can throw onto it, but that's kind of cool about it is 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 you can get a bunch of different options. And it's going to be you a can lot. change the horsepower levels, the wheels, the brakes. You and you've do... also got great factory support with Roush. Roush Absolutely. Roush and these up. guys, um, Roush technically is is a manufacturer. You get your own window sticker, your own pricing, and your own warranty and stuff on it. So this is a cool, cool car to get. So it's more rare. It's better, and uh, honest to God, it's it's pretty badass. Uh, so you've got a lot going on. So they should check out uh, they should check out ChristopherTitus.com. ChristopherTitus.com, the new special about Voice in My Head. Go check it out, uh, and uh, it's really funny. Hour and forty seven minutes of comedy. Then go to FundAnything.com for one of the funniest movies ever written. I don't want to push it too far, but pretty much uh, could be the funniest special movie. unit. The movie on FundAnything.com. Check it out. Uh, let's get invest in that movie. Let's get it done. And Thanks, man. And where do I get this T-shirt? Oh, by the way, Combustion Speedwear. Go to CombustionSpeedwear.com if you want guy stuff. Uh, it's a piston. On the back of the shirt, it says, uh, "If you don't know what's on the front, you need to slap your dad." <laughs> you Christopher Titus, man. We'll uh, this is uh, the 2014 Roush. Thanks to Roush. Thanks to Christopher Titus. And until next time, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. <laughs> <laughs>